This is the Ender 3 Pro. In this mini review, we're gonna look at what's changed and is it worth the extra money? Now you might have noticed it's been a little while since I made an Ender 3 video and that's because I don't own the printer anymore. It went to a couple of young kids and I set it up perfectly for them with an easy ABL sensor and a removable magnetic build surface. They've been having a ball ever since and learning a bunch about 3D printing. I reached out to Banggood and they agreed to send me this, an Ender 3 Pro. And in this mini review, we're gonna look at what's different on it and whether it's worth the extra money over the Ender 3. It probably makes sense to start with the changes. The most obvious thing is this removable, flexible magnetic bed, and I've reviewed one just like it when I reviewed the Easy Peel system, and I have to say the performance of this one seems absolutely identical. The only difference is this little notch on the front to help you peel it off. It's once again a BuildTech like surface, it's got a little bit of a texture. When the print is finished, you remove the whole light and then peel it away from the part and the parts come off quite easily. The skirt can be tricky to get off and a while ago I reviewed some AMX 3D tools and they are ideal for getting underneath and getting off the skirt without damaging the print surface. This surface works great with PLA and even PETG but anything above 80 degrees is going to destroy its magnetism because of the Curie effect. Therefore ABS is now off the cards with this build surface. The second thing we have which probably isn't as obvious is the power supply. It now has a proper mean well. 500 watt power supply instead of the no-name one from before. So what does this mean for you? Well, firstly, they're claiming that the bed heats up faster than before. Now, it is hard to know because we've added some thermal mass on top with this new magnetic sheet, but I would find the performance on par as to my first Ender 3 that just had the straight sticker. So I guess it is faster when you compensate for that. The main improvement for most people with this power supply is that it's quieter. It does have a cooling fan, but the difference is that cooling fan only comes on when it needs to, reducing the noise when the printer is sitting there at idle. I think on paper that the printer should now be safer. Meanwell is a trusted brand and it's built that reputation from years of quality products. Therefore, there should be even smaller chance than before of anything failing and catching on fire. Our other change is perhaps the most subtle, and it is this, this batter extrusion for the Y axis. It's much beefier than before, and on paper at least, it should mean that the bed is more stable. Having said that, I never had any problems with my bed wobbling from either side with the first printer, and I haven't had any problems with this one either. One other change that I've noticed is with the electronics box. One of the first mods that a lot of people did with the original Ender 3 was to print a cover for the fan so no debris could fall down and clog the fan and overheat the mainboard. This has now been inverted, so everything is underneath the printer, and there's no chance of that happening anymore. This also means that the SD card reader and the USB slot is lifted up and it's a little bit easier to plug things in and out without your hand hitting the table. Setup for this thing was pretty painless for me second time round. I got the whole thing assembled, leveled, filament loaded and something sliced and printing within one hour. This included me pulling things apart, trying to look for changes and consequently making a couple of mistakes where I had to undo things, put them in the correct orientation and put them back together again. Safe to say that any of the changes that have been made to this printer have not affected its ease of use and installation for a first time user. So what of quality control? And this is an evaluation, not so much of the Ender 3 Pro, but just Creality products in general, because I now have a sample size of two. Well, this one's probably not quite as nice as my first one. It's very subtle, but there is a very minor dipping in the bed surface, not enough to cause me from having any print adhesion issues, but I would like to note it. Also, it's not quite flat on the ground. There's a little bit of wobble when I put it on a flat surface, and on paper, I suppose that's worse, but I haven't found it actually changed anything to do with my print quality. Compared to my first Ender 3, this one needed a little bit more fine tuning and tightening. The bed sitting on the Y extrusion in particular, there was a little bit of wobble, so I had to tighten the eccentric nut to tighten that up. And also the tension of the Y belt was too floppy, so I had to tighten that up too. So what most people are gonna care about is print quality. And I haven't printed as many as I did for my original review because I think most of this is identical, but I have done enough to verify that the print quality, for me at least, is on par with the original machine. And that is excellent, especially for the money. The first thing I printed were these Maker Coins and there were four lots of these at nine hours each and then a couple by themselves afterwards. These bear the names of my patrons who I appreciate so very, very much and I'm gonna draw them to help give away my monthly giveaways. It came out pretty cleanly. One of them had a layer shift, but I put that down to using Octoprint. When you've got the nozzle moving to the corner plus so many individual objects, it's fair enough that it might bump and shift. I'd like to note that I'm using the same Simplify 3D profile that I posted in a previous video on how to tune your slicer. 
Next up, I decided to do this vase in vase mode, funnily enough, and I've never printed anything the full 250 millimeter height that the printer can do. Well, this was the first time and this is it. This one turned out pretty nicely, but I probably had the speed a little bit too high at 90 millimeters per second. You can see there are some bumpy bits where it's probably been wobbling from the vibration and it has reduced the final surface quality just a little bit. I run this print side by side with my Frankendoodle now that it's printing and the Frankendoodle one turned out pretty good until the end where it came loose and then melted itself to the hot end. I've never seen that before and I reckon it's quite a work of art. Next I did this little Pikachu, a low poly one by Floalistic and this is something I do to test a lot of my printers. Once again it printed pretty cleanly, I was happy with the results, it looks really nice in this gold PLA from X3D, but I noticed it wasn't quite the quality that I wanted and that's because I left my printing profile still on 90mm per second. I lowered that to my usual 70 and then I printed a Benchy, got to have one of these in each review. This Benchy was well formed, pretty happy with the quality, probably exactly the same as the previous Ender 3 which you can expect. I will note that it does have the zebra stripes on the upper surface, so we'll be testing TL smoothers again on this printer in future. Finally, I wanted to bump up my print settings and print something that would undeniably prove the quality that these things can pump out. So therefore, I printed this baby Groot. I turned the layer height down to 0.15 of a millimeter, I turned down the speed a little bit, and this thing came out flawless. I purposely printed it in black PLA from X3D. Black has a tendency to show up any flaws, and here it is in all of its glory, and you can see that it is in fact flawless. The printer has captured perfectly the fine texture of the timber all around Groot. This is the type of print I see posted on Facebook groups to show off the capabilities of what this printer can do. All right, summing up. Is this a good printer for the money? Yes, yes it is. But the elephant in the room is that it costs on average about $100 more than the base model. Let's say you wanted to upgrade your base model to this magnetic sheet and this power supply. By my research, the sheet is around $20 to $30 and the power supply is around $90. So buying those parts separately, you're probably not going to come out ahead. Keep in mind you'd also have to print different covers for the power supply. And the one that came on this is 3D printed instead of injection molded like on my original Ender 3. I did also test the power resume feature on this, and yes, it did work, but people probably rely on it too much. As you can see on this one, there's a clear line going around where it started and stopped. You're always gonna have a period of heating up, you're gonna have ooze during that, and it's gonna introduce imperfection into the model. So yes, it might save your print, but no, it's not gonna be flawless like they show in the photos. So do you wanna pay an extra $100 for this printer with these mods? Well, that's gonna be up to you. Do you care about the quieter noise from the power supply and the marginal improvement in safety? Depends where you keep your printer. Do you care about this bed? Well, you might already have some glass that you're gonna use or some magnetic sheets lying around and therefore purchasing this would be of no interest to you. Personally, I think these are two nice upgrades and if you have the money, I would recommend getting this one. If you don't have the extra money for this, then I wholeheartedly still recommend the original Ender 3. Now there's a lot of first time 3D printers getting this printer and experiencing difficulties. Please remember that 3D printing does have a learning curve and don't necessarily blame things on the end of 3. However, to help that, I'm going to make some more videos on this machine. One of the ones coming up is going to be dialing in your first layer, including bed leveling that you can do without spending extra more money, assuming you're happy to burn the bootloader and change the firmware. Beyond that, I'm going to have a bunch more videos on how to upgrade and improve your Ender 3. I've been using this stock and some of the mods that I printed previously, I've definitely missed. So I'll make an updated video on what I consider to be the essential mods and what I wouldn't bother doing the second time around. I'm also going to update my BL Touch video because my previous one has become outdated due to some changes in the TH3D software. So this time we're going to use Vanilla Marlin and hopefully keep the power resume feature. I've had requests from my Patreon for Clipper, so I'll be covering that, and I'll definitely keep it the focus of my how-to video for Octolapses, which is getting closer and closer. If you don't want to miss any of that, then please hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.